Good afternoon there, everyone. Rifle here. Just want to see if anyone gets on. If I'm actually live. I forgot to put a comment on here. So this is Haggai, the last, uh, my last 15 minute segment of Haggai. Just want to see if anyone joins. Hang on. It says I'm live, but I can't see anyone joining. Oh, there's one person. So, okay, there are two people. Okay, so, right, seems like we are live. Okay, so Haggai, this is part four of Haggai. This will be my last uh, section that I do on here. And then from next week on, there will be someone different. Hey, Deets, how are you doing, brother? Um, and for anyone who is watching and maybe think that I have trimmed my beard uh, or th have thinned it out, uh, it was not on purpose. Uh, Nathan and I slept outside last night in a tent in the freezing cold weather. And uh, as I was busy blowing up the mattress, you have this little handheld pump that you plug in. And as I was blowing up the mattress, my beard got stuck into this 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 fan pump, whatever. And uh, so, yes, my beard is a little bit shorter today. Uh, got stuck in the pump, so it is definitely thinner than it was the last time you saw me. However, I live to tell the tale. In any case... So let's start here where we ended last time. I was talking, uh, this is chapter 2 of Haggai in verse 6. And the Lord says that once more I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I said that we have to remember here the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. So God is not shaking now. He's not doing that to damage and to harm us. God is not in shaking. That's not the covenant that we are in. Holy Spirit is our teacher. But in here, it talks about shaking. It talks about, you know, terrible things going to be happening. And later, God says again that he will shake in the last little bit of this. And this reminds me completely of uh, Isaiah chapter 60. Because let's see what it says here in Isaiah chapter 60. Very, very familiar part of scripture. If you've been in church any amount of time, you probably know this off by heart. But this is what it says in Isaiah 60. It says here, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. Uh, the Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. How amazing is that? So in this very, very same part of scripture, within two verses here, we have the light, the glory of God himself. But then in the same time, it says there's darkness and it will be dark over the whole earth. Uh, deep, not just dark, it says deep darkness. So behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness shall cover the people. And I think that's what we're finding now is... There's darkness over the earth, and we know that darkness is not of God. God is light. So this darkness is not of God. He's not trying to teach us something through this. God is good. He teaches, trains, comforts, directs, makes us wise through Holy Spirit. Not through viruses, not through COVID-19. The enemy brings things. The enemy comes to bring damage, to kill. God himself said through Jesus, who is God, in John 10, 10, I come that you may have life. So Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine. I believe this is such an amazing time for us as the church, the body of Christ, to rise and shine right now. That we can show people what it looks like to live fearless. In the midst of this pandemic, and there are unfortunately and very sadly a lot of people that have died. And there are a lot of families that are hurting right now because they, they, they have lost loved ones. But even during this time, we at the church should be able to bring comfort, should be able to bring peace, should be able to bring hope in this world. And here it says that darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. And, and we are the light. Jesus said, you're a city. You're a light on a hill. So let us have the light that is in us shine during this time so that the world, because here it says, 
the Gentiles shall come to your light. So my question is, what light is the body of Christ emitting right now? What light is shining through your life right now as a child of the Most High God? Can people see in your life during this pandemic that Jesus is on the throne of your heart? That Jesus is on the throne of your mind? That there is no fear in you? That where people are angry and bent out of shape because of what's happening, you can bring a word of encouragement, you can bring a word of peace. Let us be those kind of people that bring the light and the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ to this world. So let's carry on here. In verse 10 it goes on and it says, On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now go and ask the priests concerning the law. And if you were here in section 1 that I did, I said that this prophet is now asking a question on behalf of God. God doesn't need an answer. When God asks a question, he's not asking the question because he doesn't know. He's asking the question so that you and I, or whoever the question is for, can think about the question and now as we meditate and ponder what God is asking, we can think about that to come up with a right answer so that we can do the right thing. Garden of Eden started way in the beginning. God comes, he says, Adam, where are you? God knows where Adam is. He's not thinking Adam is lost and Adam needs to help him here. So the, the, the prophet comes and he says, ask the people concerning the law. And he says, yeah, for time's sake, we won't go through everything. But he says, if one carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and with the edge touches bread or stew or wine or any food, will it become holy? Basically, what, what the question is here is he's asking the priests. In the law, if you carry something dirty or unclean and you touch something which is clean, does the dirty make the clean dirty and vice versa? If I have something clean and I'm carrying something clean according to the law and this clean thing touches something which is according to the law dirty, not holy, does the clean thing make this dirty thing clean? And the question is obviously no, it's not. It's not. So what God is saying here is dirty things make clean things dirty way easier than clean things make dirty things clean. If you take, I don't know, dirty dishes and you leave dirty dishes and you take dirty dishes and you put the dirty dishes amongst clean dishes, will the dirty dishes clean up the clean dishes? No. Dirty will make the clean dishes dirty. So what God is saying here, and for time's sake here, he carries on and he says, this is what this people is like to me. So what God is saying through Haggai the prophet is he's saying, a dirty people cannot build a clean temple that will carry my presence and my glory. People who are not consecrated, people who are not set aside, people who are not doing what they were called to do, a dirty people cannot come and build a clean temple. And God said in the beginning, I want this temple to be built so that my glory, so that I can find joy in this temple. It's God's desire and His will to find joy in you and I, the temple of God. But He makes it very clear, and this is Old Covenant law, don't get mixed up here. He says that dirty people can't make clean buildings and clean temples. So what he's saying here is we need to clean ourselves, which the blood of Jesus does, which the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us, he leads us, he guides us, and as we follow that, we stay clean. The blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness, the Bible says. But now in, in uh, Matthew 5, I believe it is uh, probably verse, round, I think it's verse 23, round about there, Jesus talks about something that, speaks to this as well as Jesus says if you have an offering if you have something a sacrifice and you want to bring it to God but there's something that is uh, between you and your brother which is not right first put that sacrifice put the offering 
put the gift that you want to bring to God, put it down, go to your brother and make right. In other words, that which is not peaceful, that which is causing dissent, that which is causing division between you and your brother, put the thing that you want to bring to God down first and then go and fix the relationship that you have with your brother. And once you have done that, now you come back because now you're clean from that and now you can bring this gift because in, in, in these days, in the olden days, yeah, people would you know, build a temple or bring money or do certain works. They would do certain things but from a wrong motive and they would have bad heart matters, bad things in their heart and through works try and pretend or try and get into God's good books. So God says here, yeah, you guys are like that. You're building the temple and now the older generation is with the newer generation and you're building together and that's great. But guys, you have to sanctify yourself wholly, completely. Everything of you has to be sanctified to me. And then it goes on here and God talks to them and he says, okay, so when you came here on verse 15, consider your ways. He says, before any stone was laid here, he says, um, when you came to a heap of, uh, of wheat and you wanted 20 ephahs, there were only 10. And he says, you wanted to draw so much wine, but there was only half of that. God said, I did that. He said, I did that because you were wicked, you were dirty. But look here, now God comes and he says in verse 20, again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month saying, speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow thrones of kingdoms, just like we see now. Things are falling down. Things are shaken. God is not shaking and killing, but things are falling down. And at the end of that all, God says, In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel. He says, My servant. He says, And I will make you like a signet ring. For I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. That's where you and I are right now. God has chosen you. You who are watching this, you are God's chosen one. If you have cleansed yourself with the blood of Jesus, if you have become one with Christ, if your spirit is one joined to his, that's what God says. You're my chosen one. Remember the Bible says, what's it? Uh, many are called, few are chosen. Few are chosen because few choose to be chosen. Everyone out there, every single person born onto this earth, God has chosen. God has made a perfect plan for you. And now he says, because you're my servant and because I chose you, that's you and I, the church, the temple, who we are today. He says, I will make you like a signet ring. And in the very first time I spoke about the signet ring, that's a ring that the king used to have. And what's happening now is things are melting. Things are literally falling apart. And what happens now when, when they would take the letter, the king would take wax and on that welted wax, he would seal the letter and then he would take his signet ring and he would sign that letter to say, this is a decree, a declaration from the king. And you and I are that signet ring of God. It's like this. We are married to him. We are on his finger, never to be separated. And now as everything around us is melting, just remember the Bible says the, mount, the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Things are melting now. I spoke last time. Sports melting. Those seven mountains, the Hollywood, the stars, the comedians, all of that. Stock market, finances, different mountains are melting. But now when these things are melting, we are that emblem. We are that ring, the signet ring like Zerubbabel that God has chosen. And now we can come and we can come and put the stamp of the kingdom of God on this earth which is melting right now. That's what God wants to do through you. He's in you. He loves you. He has a plan for you. He wants to use you. And don't be one who says, oh, well, how can God use me? Or rifle, you don't know my past. Or you have no idea where I've been or what I've done. That doesn't matter. All that matters is God created you. God chose you. God cleansed you with his blood and made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And now, because you are his chosen, you are his signet ring, and he wants to use you as a stamp of his approval on this world. So where things are not going according to heaven's economy, which they definitely are not now, 
people are dying, people are losing jobs, people are fearful, people are anxious. That's not the economy of heaven. We must do like Jesus said, let heaven come down to earth. Pray this way, thy will be done, thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. How's that going to happen? That's going to happen through you and I being his ring. So I bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday. Uh, I will see you tomorrow again. I'm preaching tomorrow. I look forward to that. What a celebrate, celeb, uh, what a time of, of life that we are celebrating now with the resurrection of Jesus. We had Passover, you know, people Easter tomorrow, whatever you want to call it. Good Friday. Just so many things that are happening right now that you and I celebrate Jesus and the fact that the tomb is empty, that he's alive, seated in heavenly places, and you and I are in him. So God bless you. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. God bless.